Right, the first thing we have to do when you're starting to get your tennis started is knowing how to use the grip. There are three different grips. First thing you do is put your racket down, you grab the racket, right? And this is grip number one. This is your forehand grip, okay? You just kind of grab the racket like so. And uh, this is where you use your forehand grip. A quarter turn is the continental grip. It's just like a hammer grip. You use this grip for, for serves. The number three grip is a quarter turn again. It's gonna be for the backhand grip, your knuckles right on this edge over here. So here's how it goes. You slide your racket down, okay? This is grip one. Grip two, a quarter turn is a hammer grip. These are used for serves and volleys. And a quarter turn is grip three, okay? When you start off playing tennis, always think, that the rack's an extension of your arm, right? Don't ever treat your rack as a tool. This is part of your arm, and this is your hand. Nice. If you can dribble a ball, like so, you can hit a tennis ball. And at the same time, you can keep the rally going uh, as long as you can, if you can really control your shots uh, with your swing, okay? Don't, if you, a lot of times, when we try to start off playing tennis, we want to hit the ball hard. Just like everything else, you gotta start off in the basic stuff, okay? Like the dribbling. So if I can do one of these, this is quite, it's an exercise for you, for everybody to start off with. This is good for your hand-eye coordination, at the same time, you know what, to build your wrist. Because nowadays, you know what, when you start playing tennis, we wanna smack the ball hard, and before you know it, balls are flying all over the place. All right, this is not baseball. All right, there are boundaries, boundaries on the tennis court. All right, uh, when I start off playing tennis, I really maintain my swings. It's like simple stroke from here to there. Half swing from here to there, all right? When you go bowling, you have your weight in your front foot, you go forward. When you play baseball, you turn your shoulder, you use your body, you go forward. Uh, when you play golf, it's down here, but when you play tennis, all here, waist high is your contact point. So here's how it goes. I bounce the ball several times. These are downs. This is an exercise for you to get yourself started with. The ups, okay, we'll do a number one grip. The flip-flop downs. As you can see, what am I doing is basically controlling the shot, okay? I'm not trying to be fancy. I wanna make sure that you know what? I can control the ball the way uh, I want it at the same time using my racket. The flip-flop ups. And as you get to be a pro, you can do this, okay? I don't think you guys are ready for this, right? Watch this. Oh, I fumble. One more time. I was just showing off, right? So basically, if you can control your shot like so, and the downs, the ups, the flip-up downs, eventually you're gonna be able to control the racket. All right, now, like uh -oh. I said before, if you can do one of these, you can do one of these, you can control the shot. All right, we're gonna try you, start you to hit against the wall. You can do one of these bouncing, all right, the ball on the ground, I can hit against the wall. So I'm staying this far away from the ball. If I take a big long swing, the ball's gonna fly out and there's no way I can control the shot. Okay, for me to control the shot, I have to be gentle with my swing. I right, pretend I'm hitting the ball with my hand. Okay, that's how we do it. Okay. So if I can do one of those, with the use of the racket, it should be easier. The problem is we tend to swing too hard. If we tend to swing too hard, the ball's gonna fly out. I won't be able to go get the, the consistency I want and at the same time the rally I want. And before you know, you're gonna be frustrated, okay? Uh, your main job is first is to hit the ball nice and easy. See if you can do uh, 15 in a row. Here's how it goes. Remember what I said before, forehand. Here's your ready position, right? You get your racket back, you pivot, you step, always have your weight in your front foot. You go low, to high, that's all you need. Try it again. You pivot, bring your racket back, point the flashlight, you take a step, you swing nice and easy. Most of the time, take a big long wind up. When you take a big long wind up, the ball's gonna fly out. You don't need that. Abbreviate your circle from here to there. Always remember, you're leaning the glass wall. If you go too far back, you break the glass wall. If you go too far over, you break the glass wall. I know you're gonna ask me how come those pros on TV start whipping their racket around. 
Those guys are pros. As a beginner, you cannot do that. That ball's gonna fly out. It's gonna be out of control. So from this this uh, this drill, you the only thing that is from here to there, right? Low to high. Since I am this far from the, the wall, if I take a big long swing, the ball's gonna fly out. I won't be able to control the shot. So which means that I have two strokes in the real game. Four heads from here to there. When I do my short court, I start off from here to there. Here's a full swing. Here's an eighth of a swing. Backhand. From here, one-handed backhand, right? You have to use the number three grip. Step your right foot across, which is 45 degree angle, from low to high. It's like throwing a frisbee. It's like doing those weights, those butterfly weights, right? I cannot do one of these, because there's no way I can control that if I'm starting. So from here to there on the backhand. Always remember, line your chin to shoulder when you hit a backhand. You can't be standing like this. If you stand like this, the ball's gonna fly out. From here, see the flash side pointing to, to my opponent? From here to there. Look at my right foot. My right foot is always 45 degree angle on my backhand. On my forehand, I cannot be doing one of these. It's got to be straight up because my, my shoulder is behind where the ball is. So I have to have my front foot here from here to there. So you need low to high. Backhand, 45 degree angle here to there. Most of the time our backhands, uh, we tend to stand like so. So if I hit the ball with my stance like this, most of the time the ball's gonna go cross court. You gotta remember, this is my contact point on the backhand. This is my contact point on the volley. Uh, we're gonna go through the volley uh, technique later. And this is what I do for ground stroke forehand, forehand volley, and this for your overheads and serves. As you can see, every time I hit the shot, I try to turn myself sideways. When I hit a volley, you don't wanna see me doing one of these. I wanna make sure step across, okay? And when you do serve, serve is like serving, it's like throwing a ball. If you can throw a ball, you can serve. So I'm trying to make sure I try to simple, simplify things as, as simple as possible so I can control the shot. All right, here's the ground stroke again. You pivot, bring your racket back, you step, always have your weight in your front foot, low to high. Backhand, you pivot, step your right foot, low to high, All right? I know you've seen a lot of pros on TV teaching the open stance. I won't recommend to get an open stance yet because you know what, if you had an open stance, what happens now? You weight your back foot. I remember as a kid, uh, one thing that really helped me is uh, understanding the concept of playing tennis. Uh, my father's only 5'4". He's uh, accomplished a lot of titles, playing Wimbledon, French Open, all those big tournaments. With his height, he told me as a kid, there's no way I can beat those big people like Pancho Gonzalez and then and, and, uh, who else so the guy who won Wimbledon dropped drop me all right from Czechoslovakia he said these guys are big people but the thing is if you can use their power the generative power uh, before you know it uh, uh, the ball is going to be traveling much faster so which means that it's all physics here's you here's the ball what are you doing you get it on the rise don't ever let the ball peak on you don't ever let the ball drop on you what are you doing you're always in attack mode Okay, always in attack mode. Uh, my challenge right now, uh, I'm more concerned about the fact that uh, every time you play a ball, you gotta get the ball, you can't let the ball come to you. Because if you let the ball come to you, what happens now? You generate the power. And when your opponent's bigger and taller than you, you generate more, more power by letting the ball come to you rather than getting it early. So right now we're gonna start off with this motion, the downs, the ups, the flip-flops, and the flip-flop downs. As you can see, I could control the shot. So when I start hitting against that wall, you can see how I can generate power. So if I'm this far from the, from the wall, I cannot take a big long swing. That's what's gonna happen, okay? I can't control it. So everything is an eighth of a swing or even sixteenth of a swing. Instead of doing the whole swing from here to there, I'm just doing one of these. Low to high is a tail of a ground stroke. What, can, what generates power? Shoulders, body, okay? You cannot be doing one of these, otherwise you're gonna be handcuffed, you're gonna be farther out. Here's how it goes, okay? Full swing, eighth of a swing. Full swing, eighth of a swing. Ready? I'm gonna stand off stationarily without moving. That's all I'm doing. Oh, my hands always stay in front of me, okay? Nice and easy. I'm always turned sideways. 
as you can see, if I swing hard, there's no way I can control this ball. Okay, nice and easy. What do you think? Right, do I look good? Yep. Okay, my hands always in some front. All right, with this process, you don't see my hand like this, or my racket like this. Where's the racket pointing? Next door neighbor's roof. When I take a full swing, I'm starting here from here to there. Since I'm abbreviating my stroke, I'm just doing one of these. As the ball rises, take it early. Are you gonna ask me how you generate power in a very short stroke? Everything's body, right? From the from the low uh, from the ground stroke, the low ball, you have your weight in your front foot. You go low to high. When on a short uh, volley stroke, you gotta use your body. Everything's abbreviated stroke. So when you use that, when you do a volley, when you do return to serves, when you do a high ball. Uh, approach shot, return to serves, what else? Approach volley, everything has pre strokes. It's all physics. As you can see, if the ball is high, you get on the rise. When you do volley, you gotta go forward. Everything is forward. You can't let the ball come to you. You gotta go toward the ball. And that's a scary feeling. You gotta go forward. Forward. All right? So, so it goes. Nice and easy, forehand. Nice and easy, two. Three. I'm moving my feet, I turn myself sideways. As you can see, if I swing hard, there's no way I can turn my, my, my body quick enough. But if I set up early and move my feet, I'm always in perfect position. Okay, let's hit the shot. Recover again, nice and easy. Set up, nice and easy, set up, good, good. good. If the ball is low, you must bend those knees. You don't drop the racket down, everything's shoulder high. Okay, bend those knees, shoulder high. Okay, on your toes. All right.